Hello everyone, so NVIDIA is about to drop their highly anticipated DGX Spark this month and I have been diving deep into all the specs, pricing and whether this thing is actually going to be worth it for people who want to run AI models at home. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. If this is the first time you are visiting the channel, please subscribe and like the video. We covered this Spark system around six months ago when it was called NVIDIA Digits and there were a lot of questions about its viability and specs and that is what I am going to discuss in this video among other things. So we are going to break down what this so-called mini supercomputer actually is, compare it to the building your own rig, talk about that unified memory everyone's buzzing about and most importantly figure out if spending 4000 US dollars on this make any sense when you could probably build something better yourself. So let's get right into it. So what exactly is this DGX Spark? So the DGX Spark is basically Nvidia's attempt at bringing data center AI power to your desk in a tiny package. We are talking about something that's roughly the size of a Mac Mini, but supposedly packs a punch of an AI supercomputer. It's powered by Nvidia's new, new GP10 Grace Blackwell Superchip, which is pretty much an ARM or ARM processor and a Blackwell GPU mashed together on the same chip. The big selling point are that it can handle AI models up to 200 billion parameters locally, which is huge, has 128 GB of unified memory and delivers what Nvidia claims is 1000 tops of AI performance. Now before you get too excited about that tops number, that's measured at FP4 precision, which is basically the most optimistic measurement that could they use. In reality, for actual useful AI work, you are looking at more like 250 tops for generative tasks and 500 tops for language model stuff. The whole thing runs on Nvidia's custom DGX OS, which is basically Ubuntu with a bunch of AI software pre-installed. And primarily it draws 170 watts of power. Oh, and here is something cool, really cool. You can actually chain two of these together to handle even bigger models up to 405 billion parameter. That is something new and I just came to know about it. Here is where things get spicier. Nvidia is asking 4000 US dollar for this thing. 4000 dollars, it's a huge amount for many people across the world. For context, that's RTX 5090 money and honestly that feels pretty ridiculous when you break it down. Like I get that it's new tech and all but come on, this should realistically be priced around 2000 US dollar if Nvidia wasn't basically printing money with their AI monopoly right now. What makes it even more frustrating is that some of the AIB partners like ASUS are selling their versions for 3000 US dollars which proves Nvidia is slapping a massive premium on their reference model and we are talking about a thousand markup essentially for the Nvidia's badge and some extra storage. Now let's do a comparison with the competition. Look at this table. The DGX Spark is basically trading new performance or raw performance for convenience and form factor. A custom build with an RTX 5090 is going to absolutely destroy it in terms of AI performance, but you won't get that massive 128 GP of memory that can all be used for AI workloads. Let's talk about this unified memory thing because it's probably the most interesting part of the DGX Spark in my opinion. Traditional computers have separate RAM for your CPU and VRAM for your GPU. And they cannot really share that memory easily. With unified memory, it's all one big pool that both the CPU and GPU can access. And this is actually pretty awesome for AI work because most consumer GPUs max out at 24 GB of VRAM, which means you cannot run these massive 70 billion, 200 billion parameter models locally. And with 128 GB of unified memory, you can actually fit these huge models and run them on your desk. But here is a catch. That 273 GB per second of memory bandwidth has to be shared between the CPU and GPU. Compare that to an RTX 5090 
which gets exclusive access to 1700 GB per second just for the GPU. For AI inference, especially with large language models, you are often limited by how fast you can feed data to processor and not how much you can store. And this doesn't really end here. So while unified memory is great for fitting big models, it's not necessarily better than traditional RAM and VRAM setups for pure performance. It's more about convenience and being able to work with models that simply won't fit anywhere else. So who is this new thing for from the consumer and data center perspective? Let's unpack that in a bit more detail. Despite Nvidia's marketing, this is a consumer device. 4,000 US dollar is not consumer pricing, especially for people outside of US. That's professional workstation money even more. Most people interested in running AI models at home are hobbyists, students, or maybe indie developers who definitely don't have four grand lying around for what's essentially a specialized computer. The people who can actually afford this are probably researchers at companies well-funded startups or academic institutions with grant money and honestly those folks probably need the convenience of plug and play solution more than they need the absolute best performance per dollar for regular people who want to mess around with ai locally you are probably better off building a system with an rtx 4090 or even waiting to see what you can do with multiple smaller gpus in a cluster setup or you know what just rent a gpu from Mast Computer or any such provider. And at this point, I also want to introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling loss with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. Okay, now, while we are talking about this NVIDIA thing, let's be real about what's happening here. Nvidia has basically no competition in the high-end AI chip space right now and they are using that position to extract maximum profit from every market segment they can reach. This 4000 US dollar price tag feels like they are testing how much they can charge before people say no. Where are the Intels and MD, AMDs of this world? If they had competitive AI chips or if Apple was selling their own hardware to PC manufacturers, this thing would probably cost half or even less what NVIDIA is asking. But since they don't, NVIDIA gets to set whatever price they want and call it democratizing AI with a straight face. Now, should you fit or buy or build? Well, for most people watching this video, my advice is pretty simple. If you have $4,000 spare lying around, go buy it. If not, just you know build something on your own or just build, you know, rent from the cloud for the sets. And unless you specifically need that 128 GB of unified memory, I think you'll get better value building a custom system or going to the cloud. That is just my two cents. So the bottom line here is that the NVIDIA DGX Spark is technically impressive. Getting this much AI compute into something the size of a Mac Mini is generally cool engineering, but at $4,000, it's priced like a luxury item rather than democratizing force nvidia claim it need you know it claims to be which i don't think so it is so that's my take on dgx park launch what do you think are you tempted by the unified memory and compact form factor or does the pricing have you looking elsewhere when we did this video six months ago on nvidia digits there were a lot of cool comments from you guys and i personally learned a lot i'm again looking forward that what exactly you come up with this time because it's been six months it is going to be released in few days so let's see how it goes that's it please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thank you very much